What we've been doing is to take the known records of who the people are, in, uh, are involved. We know a bit about them. We knew a bit about them before. There's obviously Lisa, the wife of this silk merchant who was a wheeler dealer and an opportunist and a sharp operator doing all sorts of things. He emerges as a very interesting, if slightly dodgy character. Um, Lisa herself from landed gentry. We've got Leonardo's father, who has been very little research, but was a major, major lawyer and acted for Lisa's husband. So there's an obvious link there, um, and Leonardo himself. And in all these areas, Giuseppe, who is an absolute genius of archival research, has come up with new material. So we can really tell the stories about these people, about their lives, about the texture of their lives, rather than just these kind of abstract figures who appear in sundry documents. Um, uh, not the least exciting of them was we've discovered who Leonardo's mother was. We know that she was called Caterina and she was married off to a, a local man who wasn't wealthy but at least wasn't poverty stricken a year after she, Leonardo was born. But we now know who she is. Caterina de Mayo Lippi. Mayo means that her father was Bartolomeo. He seems to have been an heir do well. He disappeared, he'd abandoned the two children he had with unknown mothers. Uh, in 1451, which was the year before Leonardo was born, Caterina was recorded as being 15 years old and she had a, an infant brother or a young brother who was two years old. And they were looked after by elderly relatives, a really sad situation with no husband and no identifiable mother. This was the young woman that uh, Leonardo's father impregnated on a summer's evening in, uh, in, in 1451. We, we know when... He was back in, in Vinci, was, he wasn't doing legal work in Florence at that time, so can identify precisely when he came back. He had some romantic attachment, a dalliance with uh, Caterina Lippi, and uh, Leonardo was conceived. Although he's a legitimate child, the birth was much celebrated. Um, he was baptised on a Sunday, over a prominent day. He had prominent local people as godparents, and he was taken into the grandfather's house. The father was making his career in Florence and was shortly to, to marry a bride who was suitable for a, an ambitious landed young, young lawyer. Um, so we really know who Leonardo's uh, mother was, Caterina, um, and she was then provided presumably with a dowry, a small dowry, to marry this local man to, to get her uh, out of the way and looked after while Leonardo was brought up in the in the grandfather's household. He's listed as a bocca, one of the mouths that uh, in the tax returns was you list your property, your wealth, and you, you also have to say how many mouths you are feeding in this tax. So Leonardo is a bocca, a mouth in his grandfather's, grandfather's household. And there's a nice footnote to the Caterina story. In 1494, Leonardo, when he's in Milan, famous artist now, a major figure working for the Duke of Milan, he notes that Caterina came to stay. And we think, well, that surely can't be Leonardo's mother, but we now know from the Libro dei Morti, the mortuary records in Milan, that a Caterina from Florence died the next year. And we've got a record of Leonardo paying her funeral expenses. So in the last year of her life, after her own husband has died, she's come back, is reunited with her famous son, and lives the last year of her life, presumably in not very good health, but being looked after by Leonardo in his house. And this is really rather a nice romantic story.